Hi everyone, good evening. No, no, can. Uh, it's so good to see so many faces here, so many people here on a Tuesday evening. And as Fred uh, said in, when he introduced me, I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a, uh, a scientist, or I, I'm just a, a person very curious about dreams I've ever been because I'm, I dream a lot. Since I was a kid, for me it's very easy when I fall asleep. Uh, it takes like five, ten minutes and I'm already dreaming. And so I, I've always been very curious why that happened. Uh, what happens? Is there any meaning in those dreams that I have every night? And when I became a spiritist, uh, it, br it brought me a lot of knowledge that I had no idea uh, before. And I saw how important the dreams can be to us and to our lives. Not only dreams, but uh, also the, the sleep, a good uh, night of sleep, and how the dreams can be our contact with so many things that I'm going to show you. But before I start, just want to tell it's only a theory. We're not doing any practice here. So <laughs> don't sleep, don't sleep, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, before, uh, the doctors, they recommend us to sleep around seven hours each night. And it usually changes when we are a baby, a newborn, we usually sleep more than that. Almost we spend all the day sleeping, just wake up to uh, eat a little bit, breastfeed, and then we go to sleep again. And when we become a little older, older we usually dream less than we used to sleep. But on average, we sleep around seven hours each night. And an American man and wi woman, they live 78 years. So if we think about seven hours each day, each night, in 78 years, in the end of the, our, our incarnation here on Earth, we will have slept 23 years. So imagine, we spend 23 years of our lives sleeping. It would be a waste of time if uh, nothing happens during that, that time that we are sleeping. But as God is good, is just, and He wouldn't allow us to, to waste a very precious moment and duration of our, our lives, we can do, yes, we can do many good things during our sleep. And let's see how it works. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to bring this first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In this letter, uh, St. Paul is talking about the, he's telling to those people that don't believe in life after death, that life after death is a reality, it does exist, and he uses the example of Jesus who reincarnated, uh, res uh, the resurrection of Jesus and how he came from the dead, as they used to say at that time. And in many places in this text, Paul uses the word sleep and death as a synonym. And it, it's very interesting at that time that he uses it as a synonym. And in one of the, just, it's not working. No, it worked. OK. In one of, of his texts, he say that, I protest, brothers, by my pride in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, o our Lord, I die every day. So. He used to say that he dies every day. But why does he say that? Do, do we die when uh, we, we sleep? I, I don't know you, but when I was a kid, I used to, uh, to watch carefully my father sleeping, especially on Sunday after lunch. He was there sleeping after having lunch. And uh, as a kid, I was afraid he was going to die at the moment. And so I was carefully uh, going very close to him and just to see if he was breathing, he, his chest was moving and then I could breathe in relief that, okay, he's alive. So since I was a kid, I know that we don't die when we sleep. It, it's, there are two different things. But Paul, they, he uses this word many times in this letter. In one moment, he also says that uh, Christ appeared to 500 brothers most of them who are still alive, and many of them who are now asleep, who fall asleep. So he uses this word, to fall asleep, as a synonym to die. And if we go to the Spirit's book, uh, the Spirit's, in one of the questions, they answer, ex you, they use exactly that example to Kardec. They say that you should see how death should not be feared, since you die daily according to the words of a saint. And we can also, See Leon Denis in the book, 
life and destiny. He also says that sleep is brother to death. We're not going to explain it right now. I just wanted to, you to keep that on mind because further we are going to see why that happened. But it's very interesting how they put sleep and death in the same level. And now we are going, before going to the spiritist view, let's see a little bit about the, the scientists, scientific side of the sleep. According to the, the, the scientists and the medicine, we have five stages of sleep. The first of them is when we are falling asleep. It's a very light sleep, the one that we may have here during this lecture, but it's a very, very light one. It's very easy for us to wake someone up uh, when he's falling asleep in this first stage. So if you see anybody trying to sleep, just do something to, to wake him up or her up. And so uh, this usually lasts about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a very short period of this sleep. And the second one is the stage when the, we lower our brain waves. So it's a signal that we are becoming more calm, preparing ourselves to go to the, this deep sleep. That is actually the third and the fourth sta four stages of the sleep. It, then it, it is difficult to wake someone up when they are in this deep stage. And, but it's very important to our body. What happens there? Uh, it's when, for example, we have uh, uh, the growth hormone. They are liberated in our body. So it's very important for kids and for uh, adolescents especially. And also when we are adults, we have a doctor here that may <laughs> know more about that than me. Obviously, obviously, she knows more about that than me, but it, it's like uh, it, it helps also to the cell recovery. So it's a very good, it's very important for us, even if we are not a kid or an adolescent, to have a very good sleep because it helps our body to recover, itself to recover. And then we go to the last stage, there is the rapid eye movement. It is called this because if we go closer to someone who is in the stage five, you can actually see the eye moving and it is when the dreams happen. So it's scientifically, they, the scientists, they say that the dreams happen in this stage and during that period of our, of our sleep is when the brain is very active. If in the first, uh, the second one, the, we had the slower brain waves in the last one, we are gonna have a very uh, fast activity of the brain is when we put in the memory, we file what we learn during the day and what we don't learn. We just, it's like a cleaning our memories and everything that we saw and studied during the day. And it usually, we usually it happens between 70 and 110 minutes. So, and we go through the cycle five times each night. And now we have Sigmund Freud. Freud was the first person who treated uh, dreams as a science. Before him, we only had the dreams uh, explained through a mystic, magical view and not scientifically. And he wrote this book, The Interpretation of Dreams. And in this book, he He said that the dreams transport the individual to another world where the material is reproduced or remembered. But let's explain, Freud is not talking about other world as a spiritual world. He only talks about us here in this uh, physical life and physical world. He doesn't talk about reincarnation or about religion, anything like that. But according to Freud, our unconscious is just like this, an attic. Why does he say that? Because, for example, if we have a house with an attic, what we do now during spring? We take all the coats that we have, the gloves and the scarf, we put them in boxes and we just go up in the attic and we leave it there until we need it again next year. Or maybe we can spend two, three, four years without seeing what we have there. And he said that the unconscious is the same thing. All the things that we have in our daily lives, we go and file that in our unconscious. And what happened during sleep? During sleep is when we can 
bring those memories back from that unconscious, from that attic. And one of the main dreams that Freud explains that we have is, is with memories from our childhood. For example, if I ha I, I'm having a reunion with a friend from high school or from my first years of school, before that day, before going together with them, this reunion, this meeting, is, I will probably dream and bring back to my memory during the night, during my sleep, in my dreams, some memories that I have from that time because I will be preparing myself to that meeting. For example, I will remember some moments that I have with them, the name of one or two persons that maybe now I don't remember. So it's like a way for my brain to say, this is what you need to remember to go to a meeting tomorrow. And we have another very important uh, dreams that he says. Uh, he says there, the dreams can be a repressed wish that we don't say it out loud when we are awake, but during the sleep, sometimes we don't even know that, that we have that wish. For example, one of uh, her patients, he says that she had this dreams that this dream that she was had invite she had invited a friend of her to go to have lunch in her house and she was dreaming that she couldn't find any of the ingredients to make that dinner that lunch and she didn't know that what was happening that every night she was dreaming about that and after talking to Freud they realized that she didn't want that friend should go to her house because she was afraid that she could steal her husband. So it was something that she, she actually she had no idea. But after talking to Freud, she, she realized, yeah, I, I don't want her because she may steal my husband. So it was a, a wish that she had repressed. And during sleep, it, bring, it was brought to her. And you also have the Carl Jung that he comes after Freud, some years after Freud, and he goes a little beyond what Freud says because he, he wrote this book, Man and His Symbols, and he says that the dreams are not only a repression or a satisfaction of the wishes that we have, but can be also a manifestation of a problem that we are uh, going through, we need to overcome. Sometimes we may find that solution, that problem in our dreams. And it can be also a picture of what is happening to our lives. And in this way, he used many times the symbols uh, to, to interpret the dreams. But he always says that it's not like I can get a dictionary of dreams or a dictionary of if you dream with an elephant, that's something that's going to happen. Because he said it's very important for each person, the dreamer, to interpret the dreams with in this case with the psychologist or with someone because we can tell what the other what the, we can tell the meaning of the, each other's dream we can only know ourselves and he also says about the prem, premonitory dreams but how he defines that he says that is our unconscious talking to our conscious one example that he, he gives is an alpinist that uh, dreams that he's going to die and two, three, four days after he going to, goes to climb a mountain and he dies. According to Jung, why that happens? He says that his unconscious was giving him this signal that you're going too fast, you're going too far, you are not prepared to climb that mountain. He didn't realize that consciously, but his unconscious could see that. And in his dream, it's like two, these two parts of the brain were talking to each other. So he doesn't believe in uh, also in the spiritual, spiritual dreams and spiritual realms. And so he uh, gives this definition to the premonitory dreams. But you are going to see later how the spiritists Spiritism sees that. And now we have Joana de Angelis, that is the Givaldo Franco's spirit guide. And she wrote many, many books about, uh, about psychology. She's a 
psychologist and she wrote some books that she also have some topics about dreams. And I've got this iceberg here because uh, she always says that uh, she compares like the our subconscious and our conscious with this iceberg. Like we have this conscious, it's like the top of the iceberg, just 10, 20 percent of uh, our brain is like the conscious of our memories is the conscious and all the other is the subconscious and according to her the subconscious is a way uh, the dreams are a way also for us to achieve that subconscious and she she says that the majority of the cases the dreams are originated in the subconscious so she's gonna tell about the spiritual dreams but she said that the majority of them are not the majority of the dreams that we have that we daily have is our subconscious talking to us <laughs> and then he says that depending on the way that those are repeatedly filed the oldest and consequently more preserved ones frequently reappear producing dreamlike disturbing and terrifying states and sorry no shall say in the same manner Healthy and pleasant impressions, successes and joys, accomplishment, aspiration and satisfied wishes blossom during sleep and produce pleasant manifestations in the form of dreams. Now, Joana de Angelis not only talks about the subconscious, but she also tells about the memories that we have from previous lives. So as uh, she, she, she says, we can bring to our memory both what we have in our subconscious and both what we have in our from our previous life that is impressed in our spiritual body and we're gonna tell more about that further but she, just to say that she she brings all that uh, knowledge that Freud and Jung uh, wrote and she goes further because she uses the spiritism to complement what the two psychologists said before and now let's go to the spirits book there's a chapter called emancipation of the soul is uh, the chapter wall where they talk about sleep and about dreams a very good one i recommend anyone who wants more information about this subject to to read uh, do i have any volunteer to read this one tj it does a soul rest during sleep as does the body? No, a spirit never is never inactive. The bonds that tie it to the body are relaxed during slumber, and as the body does not require its presence, it travels through space and has direct relationships with other spirits. So now we, we, we have the, uh, the answer for that. Uh, that 21, 22 days that we said that we spend sleeping during our lives. So it's not a waste of time. As they say, the spirit is never inactive. So when, while we are sleeping, our body is resting, but we spirits, we are doing other things. We are, can go in to other places. And this is the, 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 the beginning of this chapter. So they just give us this idea that we don't waste our time when we sleep. We can do many, many goods or bad things, and how the sleep is important for us to, 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 to is an important part of our daily lives. And then we have again Joanna Giangelis, then she, she, she talks about the, the spiritual dreams. Any other volunteer? Shailton? Spiritual dreams. The spirit detaches from the body travels and maintains <coughs> contact with other spirits whose impressions stay impressed in his brain and are represented in the form of dreams. So as she said before, she, she talked about remembering our past, our subconscious, and now she says also that our, these spiritual dreams are the ones that we can uh, have these meetings or this contact with other spirits that happens during the night. And how it happens. I have this uh, a small video just to show what happens when we sleep, what happens to our body, our physical and our spiritual body. Let me see if it works. 
or uh, 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 sorry. Okay. Now I see we're sleeping, and as we see, the physical body stays in the bed, and the spiritual body detaches from the physical body. But it's not a totally freedom because we can see that silver cord is still attached to to the body, and so is like the spirit in the spirit's book. The spirit says it's like. A, a partial freedom because we can go to other places, we have this liberty to do other things, but we are all, always attracted, uh, attached to our physical body through that silver cord. And now we have here the answer from the Spirit's book. Any other volunteer to, to read on? Valeria? remembers the past and sometimes sees the future. It acquires more power and it's able to communicate with all the spirits. It's very important here when they say that it uh, use of the faculties that it does not possess when awake in the book Heaven and Hell, one of the, the second part of the book that Kardec is evoking many spirits. One of the spirits they evoke is from a boy, uh, a, a young child, who is uh, we, that has mental issues and doesn't talk, doesn't move, and they evoke this boy while he is sleeping, and he goes to the meeting and he talks to Kardec that he he has during the, his sleep this freedom, he has these faculties that he does not possess while, while he is awake. So it proves that when we sleep, we we are not only this physical body, this physical person that I, ha I am here, I can have more faculties, I can remember more things, I'm, I'm uh, bigger, like, it's like Joanna de Angelis calls the self, the self is not this person that I am today, but it is also the persons that I've been in previous lives, so many times all those gifts that we had in the past, while we are sleeping, we can use them again. Of course, depending on the on each person, but in this case of this boy, it's very important this uh, this talk that he has with Alan Kardec and their group because he says that he he can walk, he can talk while he's sleeping, and he knows that he is going through an uh, atonement because of some wrongdoings in the past. So he needs to go through that trial, but during the sleep, he doesn't need to stay that in that position. Also, in this first book, they also say that that is why, because of the sleep, that is why many elevated spirits, they come to the earth in missions. They, because during sleep, it's like they can, they are able to go back to their real home. So imagine a spirit very, very elevated that come from other world to earth, to uh, an incarnation, to a mission here, and needs to spend like 50, 60, 70 years here, but during sleep, he is able, he or she is able to go back, to have that freedom and to go to more elevated places. So Kardec says it's like a relief that it brings to the elevated spirits that they know that we spend like 50, 70 years here on Earth, but during that time every day, they will be able to go back to their real home. And now this, they also say that when you sleep, your spirit finds itself in the same state as in physical death. So here we have the answer to the first, uh, the second slide when we talked about Paul of Tarsus, uh, when, why he dies every day during sleep. Because when we sleep, we find ourselves in the same place, in the same state as we will find ourselves when we discarnate. So that's why Paul use those words, those synonyms, sleep and death. And now we have types of dreams. In the book, uh, Estudando a Mediunidade, Studying Mediumship from Martins Peralva, he has also this chapter about dreams, and he classifies the dreams. He says that we have three, three types of dreams. 
The first one is very similar to the, to, to the one that we saw with Freud and Jung. He says it is a representation of our physical and psychological disposition. So that the common dreams that we have in our daily activity. I dream with some issue that I have during the day, with something I'm worried about. The second one he called the reflective dreams. It's an exteriorization of file impressions and images. And these impressions and images, he says, can come from our previous life also. So it's like Joanna de Angelis also told us. Do, in these reflected dreams, we can bring back the memories that we have from our previous incarnations. And the last one is the spiritual one that he says is a real and effective activities that the spirit has during the sleep. So now we are going to see this kind of dream. So through the next slides and until the end of the lecture, we're going to focus on the spiritual dreams. Now we have here the dreams of Joseph, Joseph, uh, the father of Jesus. In the Gospel according to Matthew, Matthew tells us four dreams that Joseph has with angels. It's like dreams to advise him about things that is going to happen to him or some advice about his and Jesus. The first one, when Joseph found that Mary was pregnant, he thought about leaving her and one dream came to him in, yeah, one angel came to him in his dream and said that that son was the son of God that he had this mission here on earth that he could uh, he d didn't need to worry about that so he changed his mind and he stayed married with Mary the second one was after Jesus was born and was this one. Do you have any volunteer to read this one? Now, when they had the heart, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to, to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child and destroy him. Matthew 2 to 12. Thank you. Yeah, so it's right after Jesus was born and Herod was searching for the kid that he said was the son of God, the king. So the angel appeared again to Joseph and tells him to, to leave that place and to go to another place when they would be safe. The third dream that we have is after Herod, Herod died. The, this angel also came to Joseph and said that he could come back to Jerusalem because it was a safe place. And the fourth one is that after he found that Joseph found that Herod, was, uh, the son of the king, was the one that was reigning there. He was afraid of going to, 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 to that place. So the angel came again to him and asked, said him to go to Galilee. So we have these four dreams. Uh, in the gospel according to Matthew. So Andrew Jackson Davis, uh, he was consider he's considered the John of the Baptism of the spiritualism. He's the spiritual guide here of the center. And he has this article called The Guardianship of Spirits. In this article, he tells about the guardian angels and how this, those elevated spirits that we call guardian angel, they once were men and women just like us, but they improve themselves and today they are garden, garden angels. And he uses this example, the one that we just read before, to say that as Joseph had that dream, any of one may have. It's not something that only Joseph had or on, only some special people here on earth has. Because he says that that principle of nature which could develop a spiritual intercourse in past time it's surely capable of doing the same thing in this era, for there must be unity and system in the operation of God's unchangeable laws. So he's already talking about natural laws and the unchangeable laws of God, so it's not something that was restricted to that person in that period of time. Any of, of us can have those dreams. Now I brought 
some case studies that I'm going to show to you. And after we see those cases, we are going to uh, we are going to see what you think about that, what we can, how we can explain that, and then we're going to see the explanation from the Spirits book and the other books from Kardec. The first one is from the book Spiritual Journey, and any volunteer to read this one? Sure. Our instructor showed us two bodies lying on the bed and laid his hand on their heads, repeating the movement many times. We started to see then a light coming out of, come out of, from their noses, going to the living room where they had been talking. Soon there were the two ladies again talking about ordinary things. For them, it was a convenient therapy. So in this book, uh, Iniciação, Viagem Astral, or Astral Journey from José Nunes Maia, he tells many stories about our astral journey and he shows uh, what we can do during our sleep. And in this case, he he's there to do a, to, to take another person who is going to sleep, to help them with a rescue mission. And he just see these two ladies, like they're, they spend a day talking to each other, gossiping, doing these common things. And after they go to sleep, they just come out of their physical body, their spiritual body, go to the living room and just do exactly the same thing. So they spend the whole night talking to each other again. <laughs> so how do you think is going to be the dreams of them when they come back if they are going to if they are going to have a dreams about what they do uh, what about what they did during night what do you think they're going to dream about they are just going to dream about the same thing that they do all the time so talk talk <laughs> just talk and so they they just wasted a very important period of their night they they could be in any other places having lecture working but just just spend that for that for they like they said it may be a convenient therapy we can judge anyone but when they wake up they we only have that memories of their day talking to each other and now we have this other book is sex and obsession sex and obsession by Divaldo Franco through the spirit of Manuel Filomeno de Miranda uh, because before going to this study, uh, Martins Peralva, the one from the, 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 the book uh, Estudando a Mediunidade, Studying Mediumship, he also says that during the, the dreams we can see our real inclinations. For example, I may be one person here, but when I go to sleep, if I don't have these inclinations that I show to you, I'm going to go to the real places where uh, my spirit wants to go. So in this book, Sex and Obsession, Sex and Obsession, we have the story of Mauro, who is a young man who became a religious without having any true inclination of that. And uh, I'm sorry. No. And Mauro is persecuted by an enemy from the past and this enemy is always is there and as he is a religious he pray a lot and he during the day he can avoid the presence of this enemy but when he is sleeping or is going to sleep and at the moment of the sleep is when this enemy they, he can be he is able to achieve Mauro and what he does in this day he bring Mauro and Mauro is there praying and he magnetizes Mauro so he falls asleep very fast and he brings Mauro to this city to the city when uh, there are many people there and uh, Manuel Filomeno de Miranda he describes the city as we have in the Brazilian street carnival that we, we, we have every year that we have those uh, those people in the streets, many people partying a lot, and many things related to sex, 
to, to sex. And Manuel Filomeno de Miranda also says that many people find in that place inspiration for their work here on Earth. So they spend the night there and then they go back because, because he says that many of the people that are there, they are not discarnated, they are incarnated beings that they are sleeping and they are brought to that city. So they see those things there, those very bad things that are going on there, and when they go back to their physical bodies, when they wake up, they will have inspirations to, 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 our, to their, their daily work. And they said that many of those people, they use those inspirations, especially for uh, music, for theater, movies, and some of them. So we, we can see here in this case how, how is important this relationship with the spiritual realm and the physical realm and how it can uh, inspire us in our daily activities without we even knowing that. And in this case, a very bad inspiration. Sadly, it's a very bad inspiration. And also, Mauro, this young man, every night when he comes back from sleep, he also goes, uh, brings back his tendencies to this life that he's trying to, to avoid, that he's trying to change. And now we have this third one. This is from the book on the canvas of the infinite from Ivone do Amaral Pereira. Uh, in this book, uh, we have two stories. I'm going to tell the second, I'm not going to tell the second story, just <laughs> a little bit of that. We have this book here on sale if anybody wants to know all the story. But in this book, we, uh, they tell the story about Dom André de Casablanca. It is, it is in Portugal in the 17th century. And Dom André de Casablanca was a very, uh, was a young man who was in love with a woman, her cousin, but she didn't want to marry him. She married another person, had a kid with this other person. So Dom André de Casablanca was very upset and spent his whole life alone, traveling and to many other countries and continents and acquiring many, many uh, treasures. So he was a very rich man and he owned this castle and before he, before he discarnate, he writes a will and he gives everything that he has to this cousin that she loved very much, but under one condition before uh, she would only have his treasures if she lived in only in the half, in the left wing of the castle, because what he did, he hides the treasure that he has in the left wings. So she, he doesn't want anybody to get that treasure that he has. So he hides everything in one wing of the castle and he gives the other wing to her cousin under that condition. Nobody was allowed to go to the other side of the castle. And, but after many years he was very he regretted that decision because he was very attached to the material things and when he is in the spiritual realm, he sees that it's not good for him to become attached because he, is in, he can't move on. He, he stays in the castle all the time. And he tries to talk to her cousin and to other per persons who lived in the castle. But can you imagine Portugal, 17th century, very Catholic country, a very conservative country and a spirit appeared in front of you, they thought it was a ghost, so they were terrifying, they thought it was the devil, and nobody wanted to talk to him. As soon as he appeared, everybody ran. So he had no idea what to do. And then this young lady, Aurora, she moves to the castle, and she is a very different person from the others that we have there, because she, he can see he's a very good person, he is more elevated, morally elevated than the others. And one night, everybody tells her this story that we have a ghost here in the castle. So one night, she is praying to Dom André de Casablanca. And he goes to her room and, she, and he sees her praying. And he's praying, she's praying to the Holy Mother to help him to become a better person, not to hunt the others. And he is very touched with that. And as soon as she finishes the prayer, 
he himself prays to the Holy Mother and to God, and he asks for, an, for help. He says he wants to change, he is not that person anymore, he wants to move on, and for, th for that to happen, he needed to tell her cousin that he had this treasure in the other uh, wing of the castle, but he had no idea how to do that. And then his mother, he prays to the Holy Mother, but his mother appears and says to him that he can do that by talking to Aurora during her sleep. She says, during the dreams, you can talk to her. You can build this relationship with her. So go there one day and introduce yourself to her. Go there to the other day and bring her to a good place when she can see the nature. So she won't be afraid of you. And after you build a relationship to, with her, you can tell her what you want. And then he starts doing that and that helps him and then helps her because every day when she wakes up he she remembers parts of the dreams and with a very good sensation so as everybody tells her she wa he was a ghost he actually she actually realized that no he's a good person and i won't tell the end of the book <laughs> i won't tell the end of the book but you can imagine a little bit what happens. But I told these three stories, especially the last one, just for us to, to think about why do we remember some dreams, why we don't remember some dreams, and what happens when we remember. So we have another time a question from the Spirit's book. And um, again, I need a volunteer to read. Do you have any? Bella? Why do we not always remember our dreams? As a body is heavy and material, it is difficult for it to retain possession of the impressions received from the spirit during sleep, because those impressions were not received through the physical organs. So we can see here how different it is. When I am here talking to you, my ears are hearing and listening to you, my eyes are seeing you, so all these impressions are brought at the same moment to my brain, and it is impressed to my physical brain that I have here. But during sleep it's different because as we saw, the spiritual body, the perispirit, it goes to other places, and we are only attached by the silver cord. So our brain stays here, but our, physical bo our spiritual body is in another place. And it's through the silver cord that the, they communicate to each other. So it's not as easy to have these impressions in our physical brain as it is during the awake state. And this is from Leon Denis in the book Life and Destiny. Any other volunteer to read that one? The father of the soul separates from the body penetrates in the etheric regions, the weaker is the tie which unites them, and more vague is the memory of the dream. The soul soars far into immensity of space. The brain cannot register the sensations. Often, the last sensations of our night travels remain upon awakening, beyond then it's life and destiny. So I brought this rubber band here just to exemplify. Let's suppose it is my silver cord, and I'm here, Daniel, hold it. <laughs> Here's the physical body, I'm the spiritual body. So the further I go, you can see the thinner it is. So it's more difficult for all the impressions that I have in here to go to my physical brain. That is why he says that the further we go, the more difficult it is to have this impression. So usually we have the, the we remember when we are leaving the body, that is still like this, and then when we are returning to the body. So the, these are the two moments that we remember the most. But of course, we, we have more than that. If our spiritual guides want us to remember something, he can magnetize us, he can bring that memory to us. So each case is different, but this only to illustrate what happens and why we don't remember everything that we do 
during our, our sleep. Now we have the another case of study. This is one from the Spirit Review of 1858. And in this story, the Kardec is telling to us about, uh, uh, about this. Let, let's read. Do you have any other volunteer now? Because uh, we can read and then I can explain a little bit. What is here? So Mrs. B has this maid and one day they wake up in the middle of the night and the maid tells her that she just saw her mother dying. And of course they think it's just a nightmare because okay, she, she come down and she go back to sleep, but some days later So in this case, what, what do you think had happened to the, the, this lady? Why did she had the did she have this dream? Yeah, no, but but the mother died at the same time, almost at the same time. Yeah. Right? It was in the same time that the mother died that she had the dream. So her spirit went mm -hmm. to meet the mother and saw what happened. Yeah, that can be an explanation. She was there with her mother and she saw that and then when she returns, she had this memory on her brain. And the other one that Kardec also brings to us is that is the opposite, that the mother goes to the daughter and tells to the daughter, daughter what happened. And when the daughter wakes up, she, she just describes every, everything that the mother told her. So we have these two, uh, two, these two cases. We, we don't know what happened exactly, but can be the, the daughter going to the mother and seeing the mother dying in front of her, or we can, can be the mother who had just died going to the daughter and telling her what has just happened. So we have these meetings while we sleep. This is actually this one that we just saw is an ex example of the meetings that we may have during sleep. And any other volunteer? <laughs> can, two, can two individuals who know each other visit one another in sleep? Yes, and many <coughs> others who are not aware of their relationship when awake meet and chat. You may have friends in another country without even knowing it. Visiting friends, relatives, acquaintances, and anyone who can be of use to you in sleep is very common. And you yourself carry out these visits almost every night. So this is uh, the explanation of what happened in the previous case. And it happens to all of us every night. Sometimes we can go to sleep and we can see each other that we see here doing the spirit center. We can see some friends of work. We can see some persons from our family. Uh, for example, I have one story from, from my family. Uh, like six months or one year after my father uh, discarnated, my mom and my sister, my older sisters, they, they had this dream one night that they were with my father. But the two of them, they had the exactly same dream. They were leaving the apartment, getting a train, going to a city. In the city, they went to a house. They found my father there, sitting in a table. They were like having dinner with him. And the descriptions were like exactly the same one. How can we, we explain that? If it's not something that really happened and they brought to her, their mind after they wake up. And Divaldo Franco tells a very good, uh, explains it in a very 
uh, good way. He says in one of the interviews that I saw of him, they ask how can we make this difference between the dreams that we have, these spiritual dreams or a common dream. And he says the spiritual dreams is like a he calls technicolor dream. It's like very vivid. It's like full HD or even further than that. And if we have the common dreams, it's like a black and white TV from the 70s. That way we have that image that's not okay, that is always going and coming back. So Divaldo says that to him, it's like that. He knows exactly when he has a common dream and when he has these spiritual dreams. And that may apply to any of us. If we start to having this exercise to every day when we wake up to try to remember we are going to 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 see each of those dreams because as we saw Jonah said most of our dreams are aren't the spiritual ones so we need to take care to identify and to know that what is and what it is not because we can also think that everything that we dream about is something that happened to us during our sleep And now we have Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln, uh, he believed in dreams and in the meanings of the dreams. And he used to have many dreams many times when he used to believe in those meanings. One of the dreams that he has was he, with his son Willie that died when he was 11 years old. And it was so vivid to, he, to him that he told us, to, I'm sorry, he told a friend of him one day that he had actually met his son because he, he described everything that happened during that night and many other times Lincoln also have these recurring dreams before the Civil War battles. He says that ever since the war began I have invariably had the same dream before an important mil military event occurred. The dream is that I saw ships sailing very rapidly and I'm sure that it portends some important national event. So every time there was a big battle, he used to have the same dream. So he believed in that. And he also had a dream about his death three days before being murdered. So uh, as we just saw, Lincoln had these premon premonitory dreams and We have here in the Medius book, the spirit says that the dreams may be an actual vision of present or absent things. A retrospective vision of the past in certain exceptional cases, they are also a presentment of the future. So I brought here, I don't know if you can see exactly, this is like a mountain and in the top of the mountain we have this road that's going, coming from the bottom to the top. And in the book Genesis, the Spirit explains to us that in the spiritual realm we have a different view of past, present, and future. And they say that the spirits, they are as if they were in the top of the mountain. So if I have a car coming here in this road and I see a rock rolling down, I, the spirit here in the top of the mountain is going to see that the rock is going to hit the car. So it's not that he's predicting the future like something very not natural that he's seeing, but he's just seeing the obvious that we hear when we are incarnated, we can't see. So they just say that this vision when we are in the spiritual realm is different. So in the same way, when we sleep, we can have this different vision of our present, past and future. And sometimes we can receive an advice from our spiritual guide, from any guides that we have, and this guide can tell us some advice or can tell us anything that we need to know to be prepared for that situation. And here we have also in the book Genesis, they say warnings through dreams play a major role the sacred writings of all religions, but one must not inf infer from these that all dreams are warnings. So again, we don't need to think that everything that I dream about is going to happen. 
it's very important for, for us to know that some of the, those things can be warnings, but we don't need to think that all the dreams that we have, have actually are warnings. And now going back to Joana de Angelis, Joana de Angelis, she has this chapter uh, that she, she says about how we can have good dreams. And she says that before going to sleep, the individual should think about positive and pleasant ideas, visualizing what one wants to dream about. For example, if I'm going to sleep and I want to have a very good night of sleep and dream about something good, I'm not going to read a very horrible story or watch a horror movie moments before going to sleep because not because I'm going to that place when I sleep but that impression is going to be in my brain so I will have chances to have a very awful nightmare or something like that And so she said, uh, by successfully repeating these requirements, the individual will replace one distressing and negative impressions on the fire disturbing process by those new ones. She's saying that because uh, those nightmares that I said, if I have some recurring dream every night that I'm suffering, that I'm going through a pain, I can, before going to sleep, I can tell to my brain to my memory that I'm not going to sleep, that that pain actually is going to be something very beautiful. Uh, instead of that weapon, I'm going to see a light. And if I do that every night, she said that I, we can actually program our brain to change that situation that we have filed to a new one. And going to the spiritual side, she also said that they will open possibilities of exchange with other spirits that one f will feel attracted to and will seek to transmit messages of comfort, support, and beauty to the individuals. Because uh, as I, I told a story about that book, uh, Astral Journey, by José Nunes Maia, he tells many stories of people they are going to bring to help him with these rescue missions that they have. And in many cases, when they arrive at the home, they actually see some spirits waiting for the person who is going to sleep. Because we have our, our friends, sometimes good friends, sometimes bad friends, but friends that we feel attracted to. And they are there waiting for, for us. So every night when we go to sleep, we may have some friends waiting for, her, for us in our living room, in our bedroom. So if you, we don't want to attract those friends or those enemy from previous lives as we saw in sex and obsession. We need to change our vibrations, we need to change the way we act during the day, so we are going to change the way that we act during the night. And we have a very good uh, part of the Gospel according to Spiritism. I love the, this part when we have many different prayers and one of the prayers is a very simple one, and it's a prayer for us when we go to sleep. Do you have any volunteer? The, the last one? <laughs> TJ? My soul now goes to be with other spirits for a moment. May good spirits come to help me with their counsel. My guardian angel, enable me to retain upon awakening a lasting and healthy impression of them. So you can see it's a very simple way for us to, 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 to pray before going to sleep. It's like summarize everything that we saw. We just say that, yes, I know that my soul, my spirit is going to be with others. And please allow the good spirits to come. I don't want the, the, the bad ones. I don't want to get bad influences. So I know I want a good spirits, maybe my guardian angel or some friends to go to come meet me and please allow me to retain that memories that I have, that good memories when I wake up. So just three stages, very simple and for me it's a very good prayer for, for anyone or not, need, don't need to be exactly this one but something like that, something that we, we can try to, to start doing, it's very good. And just the last one is, is a phrase from Joana de Angelis. Actually, she says is a uh, 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 a saying. A saying, yes, a, a popular saying. Yeah, 
Tell me what you dream about and I will tell you who you are and what future you will have. So <laughs> it's, very, it's very good for us to think about <laughs> every day. That's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>